I feel good. I feel good. Um, I'm excited to sort of be here. It's been a long year and um, I've been looking forward to this competition. So to actually be here is exciting. We're in Dubai at the Holding Camp. What does a week like this involve for you and what are you looking to get out of it? Um, for me, it's just like sticking to my normal training routine. Um, I've had a few good sessions out here so far. So it's just about acclimatising, getting used to the heat. It's very hot out here. And um, yeah, just sort of getting my mind ready for what I've got to do this time next week. You've been to Doha before. Tell me a little bit about that. So it's not all unfamiliar, is it? Not all unfamiliar, no. I came with my training group uh, in 2015 in the winter in the build-up to the Rio Olympics. And um, yeah, we came around Christmas time and it was very hot. So I'm sort of trying to figure out what it's going to be like around this time of year. So I'm prepared for it. It's a bit different to a Birmingham headwind though, isn't it? Definitely. I don't want that again. No headwinds this time, please. <laughs> On Birmingham though. What, I mean, how do you reflect on that? Because, you know, it was such a significant moment for you. But how do you harness that energy and that positivity coming into a major meet? For me, um, Birmingham was emotional, obviously, as you saw, because um, it sort of just highlighted the struggle I've had over the past few years, not necessarily with like injuries, but just the struggle of transitioning from a junior to a senior athlete. And, um, you know, I've made a lot of difficult decisions over the past two years since the previous World Championships. And to sort of be at this point, not only qualified, but to win, for me, it just sort of was a big encouragement to sort of let me know that I am making the right decisions and I am good enough to be on the world stage. You mentioned just that winning. It wasn't necessarily the time, it wasn't, but it was just getting over that line first. It, yeah, it was just getting over the line first. Obviously, as you know, it was a big headwind and all the guys were in great shape. So I can imagine if you had turned that wind the other way, you probably would have had time under 10 seconds. So it wasn't necessarily about the time for me. It was just so, more so about getting that med around my neck. And it was just, yeah, it's just a symbol of the journey. You mentioned, I think, you used the phrase mental injury. To describe the last couple of years, what have you learned about yourself in that time? I've learned a lot about myself. I've learned to not define myself by what I do in athletics. I think a lot of the time, if you're doing well, you feel on top of the world. If you're doing badly, you feel like a bad person. And I've just sort of learned to distinguish the two and understand that, you know, this is my professional life and I've got my private life and not to sort of get too down when I don't do well, understand who's really there for me. You know, a lot of the time when you're not doing well, people sort of go missing. And that's expected in sport and in life in general. So it's just things like that and um, understanding what it takes for me to be, you know, a top, a top class senior. Uh, you mentioned that transition junior to senior. It's not easy that people at this camp are doing it now. Yeah. So, so what, are the, what are some of the challenges that that poses? I think a lot of it is just um, the transition of just winning every race to all of a sudden losing every race. That's just one simple comparison straight away. Um, I think you've got the expectations now of, you know, before you might have been doing it for a bit of fun. Now, all of a sudden, you've got to rely on um, contracts and that's got its expectation in itself. You've got to sort of find your, 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 your place in within the senior team. You want to try to break into the relay team. That's difficult. And I guess it's just um, sometimes handling expectations as well of people around you. You know, when you're young, people sort of expect you to just be the next best thing straight away. And in actual fact, you know, it takes time. Even Usain Bolt had many years from when he first appeared in, on our screens to when he actually saw his full potential. And if it can take time for the fastest man in the world, you know, I have no issues with it taking time for me. And it took me a long time to realise that, but you know, great things take time to sort of build. You mentioned working out the people that will be with you and working around you. Steve Fudge has obviously been a big part of that. Definitely. Sports psychologist has become a part of your life in yeah. the last six months. So do you think in a sense, in the, in the last sort of period of time, you worked out a little bit more about who your people are and, and how that fits in with your, your future? Yeah, for sure. Um, for me, Steve has sort of come into my life at a good time. Um, he's obviously coached guys within the UK to um, times under 10 seconds before global medals. So he, he's got pedigree and he knows what he's talking about. And he sees a lot in me. I see a lot in his training and uh, we're just a great fit. And yeah, like with the psychology as well, that was something that, you know, I wasn't um, always sort of sold on. You know, I didn't really feel like I needed to work on it. I thought my psychology was fine, but sort of breaking that down a lot more this year sort of gave me a big insight, you know, into the world of the mental, the mental aspect of the game. And now I've sort of got a hold of that, I feel a lot more confident when I'm racing. I was going to say, will that change anything specifically about your process at this Champs? For me, it's just a continuation of what I've been learning and what I've been doing. You know, nothing changes. You, in theory, nothing should change when you get to a major competition. I feel like it's just about sticking to what you know, doing what makes sense and trusting that that's going to be enough to sort of perform well. And in terms of this 100 metres, it's a blue ribbon event, isn't it, of a world champ. So yeah. what do you make? Sprinting's in an interesting place at the moment, isn't it? What do you make of that and where you fit into it? For me, I feel like, obviously we're all sort of getting used to not having Usain Bolt around anymore. And I feel like it's sort of going back to the times in the 90s and the early 2000s where 
you didn't know who was going to win. Personally, for me, as someone who obviously came into this sport a bit late and sort of backdating and doing research, it wasn't entertaining to watch. And I feel as though we're getting back into that point now with the Diamond Leagues. You've had numerous winners across this year, national championships, you don't know who's going to win. And for me, I think that's exciting. And, you know, sort of front running it with Great Britain now being a national champion. I sort of look at myself like, you know, of course I've got a shout and being in that conversation. You've obviously got to get under 10 seconds to be in that conversation. So that's something I know, it's not necessarily something that I look at, you know, as terms of can I do it? It's more so when will it happen? And I'm not necessarily focused on that, but we all know that that is sort of like a, sort of like a, I don't know, initiation or sort of a sign that, a certification that, you know, yeah, you're one of the best in the world, so. What does being in the conversation look like for you in Doha? Is it the final spot? Is it a time? Don't look at times at all because for me at championships it's a different beast. Um, it's just all it's all about what it takes to survive and advance through the rounds. So if it took ten eight, I'd take that to get through. Do you know, if it took nine eight, I'd take that to get through. It's just all about surviving and advancing to the next round. So for me, of course, I really do want to be in that top eight. I think it's an elite, an illustrious place to be, like you said, the Blue Ribbon event. And um, yeah, I'm relishing my opportunity of doing that.